Hey guys, D here. Um, I wanted to post my own opinion on the child spanking law Hawaii in Hawaii involving corporeal punishment that is now uh, an issue that is being brought up in the Hawaii state legisl legislature. That could be could be something that they want to, uh, lawmakers want to pass. This is just my own personal opinions on it, and I believe everybody is entitled to their own opinion. But I need to make certain things clear right from the get-go. Um, I am against child abuse. I don't believe in child abuse. I think any reasonable, reasonable parent or adult would know the difference between child abuse and discipline. You know, and, and from my own personal experience, I want to tell you guys this why, why I don't believe governments should have any say. How is it a law involving uh, a parent spanking or disciplining their children because this will lead to the government already already the government get their hands in your homes already and the last thing you need is for them to cross the threshold of your 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 sanctuary of your four walls to tell you how you can run your life next thing you know they're going to be telling you when for shit when for get up when for sleep how for live, okay, and, and another thing too, the Western mentality versus uh, our mentality here in Hawaii is two totally different things, and I'm going to tell you guys this, when I grew up, my mother didn't give me licking, and I thank God for it, because you're like, no, why, I never turned out to be one criminal, I never turned out to be one killer, one rapist, one murderer, or some kind of dysfunctional person in society, okay, they will wreak havoc or oh, and go postal and we go kill my, my you know. I thank God for my mother having one heavy hand on me. Because that will shape me into being the person that I am, the God fearing person that I am. And yes, I am a Christian, amongst many other things. And I sincerely believe in spare the rod, spoil the child. And a lot of this Western mentality coming to Hawaii, okay, is corrupting our children from a young age. You like know why? Because the children do not respect their parents. And I'm gonna tell you this: my mother guys would lick me, okay? They would lick me. They would lick me, and I knew, I knew she, my mom, my mom loved me, but she didn't beat that ass, man. Because you see, the Westerners did not understand Polynesian lifestyle, the 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 lifestyle over here. See. They think we're beating the shit out of our kids because we like kill them. I can understand if the parents is drugged out, cracked out, crack kids, you know, give a shit about the kids, then neglect, of course, there's child abuse. But you're like, no, what? If, if you, one of the dilemmas we're facing now too is that, right, is that, I mean, I mean, amongst many things, this thing will open up, these things will open up many problems. I'm telling you guys, and I want to tell you, I want to show you guys this too, from a legal perspective too. Long time ago, when we was involved with the copyright movement, learning about the straw man and about the um, corporate colored entities, and and how to, how how we are actually that that the that the the part of you that is on paper, the birth certificate, the the license, the social security card, and you know the deep state, the government might hate what me saying this, and I I hope to God I don't get any negative repercussions, but I'm gonna be straight up and share with you guys this. When we was looking into how can CPS literally, literally step into your home and yank your children from you, where do they get this de facto power from? And I'm going to tell you guys this way they get them from. They get them from your child's birth certificate. Okay? Because like the, like the certificate of title on your vehicle, okay, your child, your state of Hawaii birth certificate. The minute you, you, your child, when you, you, you put your child under the state of Hawaii with the birth certificate, you gave them de facto jurisdiction to step in on any moment and take your child from you. And that's why people do not understand that when your child will receive a birth certificate from the state of Hawaii, your state of Hawaii child birth certificate is like a certificate of title for a vehicle. Okay? And I want to tell you this about your vehicle. You know, just to break it down for you guys, okay? And this is one from a legal perspective. And if you really do your research, you're gonna you're gonna see that this is true what I'm saying. When I buy one soda, I pay one time at the store, I drink my soda, my soda is mine. I don't pay for my soda, pay for my soda, pay for my soda, and keep paying for my soda. Okay? 
But you notice that about your guys' cars. You own your car, right? But you every year you gotta pay. You gotta pay. You pay a vehicle registration. You pay an artist. All this kind of shit, you got to pay. To where you're going to ask yourself, hmm, do I really own my car? Right? And you try not to pay your car tax. You try not to pay your registration. Your ass get locked up. So I, I, so, it, so it begs to differ. I, I, in, my, in my humble opinion, as the one who look into this, you really don't own your vehicle. The state of Hawaii owns it. And you are paying them a usage fee to run your personal vehicle on their roads. And you try to pay your registration. You try to pay your car tax. You look at, you, you, you get fine. You got to go to jail. You got to, you, no, for real kind. Now, the birth certificate. I'm thinking, how does the government have de, vac, de facto power to just step in and yank your children at any time? And it only takes some jerk asshole of a neighbor for say, oh, uh, he was yelling or he was abusing his child. And then CPS... We recently had an incident with this home here, no, with my nephew, because my nephew was being unruly, he was not listening, he was being disrespectful to teachers there and go above and beyond, okay, above and beyond for help this boy, okay, but he, but he, but, but he has his own strong will, yeah, now, I believe, I believe in, because I'm, I'm going to tell you this why, because when I get out of hand, okay, my mother, my mother will lick me. I'm gonna be straight up. I'm not gonna use special words, spanking, or you know, my mother and bust that ass for real. And I thank God, cause you know why? I, I never turned into a freaking criminal. I never turned into a hoon. And I told my nephew, you keep going down this path you're on, brother. You're gonna end up in one of two places, either behind bars or dead. Okay, as an unproductive, as an unproductive member of society that no can fit in to society at large, you can either end up in jail. Or dead. Okay. Now. I praise and thank God for my mother. Disciplining me. If that's a more politically correct. Or a more correct word to use. Is discipline. So I don't offend people. Okay. Any reasonable adult knows the difference between. Abuse. And I think if anything. In most households is neglect. Yeah. But now you got a whole generation of children. That stand behind of this thing where, oh well, you can lick me because my teacher said you're not supposed to lick me. Now, what does this get now? Now you get, now you get, now the state of Hawaii, you don't know what the shit is going on in my house, okay? Because they don't put on food on my, food on my table, okay? They don't deal with this un, the unruly child when nobody's still around. But now they like dictate how we run our house? Is that what you people in the state of Hawaii want? That some Clueless lawmaker, brainless lawmaker in Honolulu going to tell you how to raise your children? You're giving too much power to the government. And you talk about balance of power, you're going to lose control of your households if you let the state be able to step over the threshold of your house. Already, already the state of Hawaii and the state government and the government period has de facto jurisdiction over your corporeal being. Your corporeal being, your physical body. Via your birth certificate, via your social security number. And now we're going to take them one more step and we're going to make them on law where they can come in and tell you how to raise your children. This will be the curse upon America. That they will have a generation of children that have no respect for the elders. And already this nation, the United States, have no respect for the, for the, for the youth. That's why they get this dumbing down of the children of the United States. The no child left behind law is all full of shit. They never help nobody. You get on dumbing down of the of the youth, and you get on disrespect for the elderly people. The elderly people. You look in the senior retirement homes. White man style is you said you when your old folks get old, you send them into an elderly housing. How much endless cases you guys hear about kupunas being mistreated in the elderly homes? Local Hawaiian style. You take care of your kupuna until the day they make it. Until the day they go home. Because they didn't give up their life for taking care of you. You take care of them. They didn't wipe your ass when you was a little child changing your diaper. Local style. We take care of our kupuna and we change their diaper when it comes their time. But this kind of white man style, I'm telling you, is getting out of hand. And now they like pass on law about, about discipline in your children. You're going to let your children be raised up in, on, in, in on society that has no respect for the elderly. 
that has no respect, that cares nothing for the children. There's a dumbing down of the of the children in the Western society. Now, I, I'm totally against that. I, I, I don't think, I mean, already, already the government can de facto jurisdiction over your corporeal body. One, because the people don't know the difference between the all capital all capital trade name uh, corporate colored entity that is the all capital version of your name on paper. And I'm going to tell you guys this. And all of you guys out there need to do your diligent, due diligence and learn who you are. And le need to learn your rights. And need to learn that we're in a society that does, that does not... Be, that, you talk about due process? Come on. Nigga, please get out of here. You know what I mean? My, my own auntie went suffer at the hands of the ATF and was totally uncalled for and was totally... They didn't break every law in the process of doing what they did to my auntie. So she didn't go do research and she found out hey, what they were doing was wrong. But see, you guys don't know your status in the government. When you was born, you was issued... You have you was issued on value from the federal government when issue on value upon your life. Okay? That was when when US Treasury account was opened under your name that was issued on social security number. So you have a net value of about five hundred thousand dollars worth in credit issued under your name under your birth your social security number. That's what you mean, your net value for just being born under the system. Okay? And how you notice when you go for go, go to a bank for your loan, you gotta sign a promissory note for your loan on your house. Okay. What gives value to their promissory note? Your signature, your John Henry on their promissory note. You like know why? You give you one, your signature, and what gives your signature power is the U.S. Treasury account that has a value of your life, then your net worth that was issued to you by just the by virtue of just being born. But what you don't know is that the the system can tell can make a distinction between you, the corporeal living breathing being, and the Corporate colored entity that is on paper. I'm going to tell you guys this. Check this out. There's a thing called a straw man, which is a corporate colored entity that was created in your name. And you gave life to him when you signed your social security card. Because on your social security card, on the bottom of your social security card, you go on a magnifying glass, your tiny microscopic words. Look up with your magnifying glass. Say an authorized signature. That authorized signature, when you signed the social security card, okay, notice how you receive all of your bills. All of your bills will come to you in capital uppercase lettering. The uppercase all caps name that is yours is the corporate colored entity that has a net worth value to the Department of Treasury. And there is a, a Department of Treasury account open underneath that name. Okay. Now, when you go for get on house loan and you sign the promissory note, that you gave life to the straw man. The straw man is a corporate colored entity. Perfect example. Mickey Mouse is not a living, breathing person. Mickey Mouse is a corporate colored entity. But I tell you what, you try to use Mickey Mouse name without getting his permission. Mickey Mouse gave an army of attorneys behind him. They would sue the shirt off your back, bro. So Mickey Mouse is a living entity, a legal living entity on paper, which is called a straw man. But is he a living breathing entity? No, because there is no corporeal form. But but you don't know that because you don't know, most people don't know the, the, the difference between the straw man and the living man. All of your credit cards come to you with all capital letters because that's the straw man. That's not the living breathing man. How the government tells the difference between the living breathing man and the corporate colored straw man is how you sign your name. Uppercase first letter, lowercase the rest of the name. All capital versions of your name is a corporate colored entity. You guys go check, look this up. All your bills come to you in all capitals. Your credit cards is issued to you in all capitals. Because that's the corporate colored entity, okay? Now check this out. Credit is circulated through your name to the Department of Treasury. You ever heard of a criminal getting sentenced to three life sentences? And you're thinking, now how the hell are you going to serve three life sentences when you can only live one life? Well, you know what we found out? Say somebody is sentenced to three life sentences. They go in jail. They go spend the rest of their life in jail. They live to be maybe about 70 years old. They die at age 70. In prison now. That's the, that's the extent of their one life. 
on paper because they owe a debt to society which claims that they ought to serve three life sentences, that documentation is a legal permission to allow the straw man, the, 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 the all caps trade name, to be alive for three of those 70 life terms. 70, one out of 70, one out of 70. Okay, when this straw man is alive, this is why when they were saying for a while back, you remember the time with when Bush Jr. and ran for president, and there was some kind of um, scandal about uh, dead man's names being used for voting registration, and they were like, "What the hell? These dead people are dead." Or so you think. You can be corporally, physically dead, but the all caps trade name of your name, that is a corporate colored entity, can still be alive in the system and they can still be credit being circulated through the straw man. So when a criminal owes a debt to society of three life terms and say they die in prison at the age 70, that gives the government permission to keep that social security, which is a corporate colored entity, alive for 70 plus 70 plus 70 so that they can pay the, the debt to society. But what is being done through the corporate colored straw man, that all caps trade name, is credit is being funneled through that name. Okay? To who? To these powerful families. And this is where shit gets real, people. You don't know that when you give your child a birth certificate, what says at the top of the birth certificate? State of Hawaii Certificate of Live Birth. The de facto status over the, corpor the corporeal jurisdiction of your corporeal body was signed over to the state government by the virtue of that state certificate of live birth. State of Hawaii certificate of live birth. This is what we don't understand. Same way how you get state of Hawaii certificate of registration for your car. You don't own your car. The government does. You lease your car from them. Because you pay registration. You pay these taxes. The last time I on check, when I on buy one can of soda, okay? I, I paid one time. I drank them and was pow. I never keep paying and paying and paying. The fact that you keep paying and paying and paying tells you what? You don't own your damn car. It's the, it is the, it's, it's, everything is under, operating under the color of law. The impression of uh, freedom. People, you don't even know that there's two forms of law. There is constitutional, basic constitutional law, and then there is the law of armed conflict, which is military jurisdiction. And I believe Hawaii comes under one unique case. We're not, we're not operating under constitutional law here in Hawaii. That's why the local state government can get away with whatever the shit they're doing here in Hawaii. We're operating under the law of armed conflict. Hawaii is under military occupation and you people need to wake up and, and, and realize this. The danger of operating under the law of the law of armed conflict is this. If the government at any time, and this is involving my Ohana in the sovereignty groups, if the government at any time deems you an enemy of the state and finds that you are working in collusion against the United States government under the law of armed conflict, they can come and seize you from your homes in the middle of the night and you will be put behind a, a military tribunal. And you know under a military tribunal, that's what's called a hangman's court. Because under a military tribunal, you have no right to do to due process. You have no right to an attorney. You face a military tri tribunal where they present you the charges that they have against you, which, which can be totally fabricated. And you have no due you have no due process under a military tribunal. And people don't know that, that the law of armed conflict, that body of law, supersedes and is much older than constitutional law. And there is politicians that has been secretly sentenced to death under the law of armed conflict when they were found to be under, with, uh, operating under collusion with enemies of the state. And this is the danger that my Ohana and the sovereignty movements don't understand. I love you guys, and we all stand for the Kaupuni of Hawaii. But know this, if they mark you an enemy of the state under the law of armed conflict, a military force can be sent to your home in the middle of the night, and they will take you by force and blindfold you and put one thing over your head, and you will be taken in front of a military tribunal and tried as an enemy of the state. And Obama, President Obama, will make this law 
he would actually push this through. That's so you know, you know, not to get off the subject, but I'm, I'm just telling you guys that this is some real shit here. Hawaii is under a unique situation. We're under wartime occupation. Hawaii is operating under a wartime occupation, and we must remain in honor. What we must do is, yes, our people speak up. We, 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 must, we must educate the world on what's going on. We must educate the world on what's going on. But we must remain in honor, and we cannot do things by violence. Because that's what they want. This is what they want, so that they can come and erase any remnants of our people. And already our people are suffering. And what the United States did to us is nothing short of genocide. It is genocide because they try to erase our language. They try to erase our culture. They try to erase everything about us. And now they made law, they passed laws that even if you was a US patriot fighting for your own country, you if, if they deem you to be an enemy of the state, your ass is hung, man. And I will tell you guys this, there's World War II veterans that were served this, the United States country that was recently hang, hung in private under a military tribunal, but the public was told they died of a heart attack. No, for real people. Because under the, 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 under the body of law, which is the law of armed conflict, you have no due process. It's, it's likely to be operating under the martial law. And martial law is the president is has a supreme, he's the law, he's the law, the judge, the jury, everything. That's not like with this issue with the with President Trump. He knows he's on ace in the hole. Even if even if the Democrats stop him, all he gotta do is declare um uh, uh declare him on in state of emergency concerning the concerning the southern border. And you know what becomes immediately available to him? He sends the U.S. military there to secure the southern border and emergency funds gets released to him to build his wall. He know he can do that. The United States know they, they can do that. But the U.S. Congress has been operating under the color of law, not under actual law. And I will tell you when the U.S. country... A Congress when become de facto. De jure means legal and lawful. De facto means dysfunctional. It's defect. The United States Congress went into de facto status under the um, Abraham Lincoln's administration. Because I, I, I miss the people. I've been, I study my law. I've been studying U.S. history, the true history of what's going on. Because you like know why? And I'm gonna tell you this: they get on secret movement in the United States government. They call them the deep state. Yeah, the cabal, the one I've been referring to. And get one war going on in the government. And they like you believe it's between the Democrats and the Republicans. No, 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 no. Even the founding fathers of the nation said that should we lose control over our banking system, we will forever lose control of our government. This is why Andrew Jackson, President Andrew Jackson, would veto any bill for a foreign entity, a foreign central bank to be set up in the United States. Yeah? Because he knew, okay, when they would leave England, they was leaving the oppressiveness of the world, the central bankers of England, of the European central bankers of England. And then when they came here for when when they first call, when they first uh, came here for set up the colonies in the, in, the, in the United States, okay, the central bankers wanted to come to the United States to to emit control because I tell you this, whoever controls the money of the government controls the government. And Andrew, President Andrew Jackson, the United States President Andrew Jackson, he said, should we lose control over our financial system, we will forever lose control of our government. And that's why any bill that was introduced and these were central banksters, or whatever you really call them, the Illuminati, the deep, the deep state, the cabal, whatever you really call them, okay? They even put people, lobbyists in Congress to try and all this shit you guys seeing right now in the news about this battle between the, the Democrats and the Republicans is bullshit. It's bullshit. It's illusion what you guys seeing. Check this out now. Andrew Jackson did everything. He didn't veto everything. He didn't veto every bill that was to introduce on foreign banking, central banking system into the United States because he knew if, they, if, they, if America wanted to be in control of their own government, they had to hold their bank. They had to be in control of the purse strings because if you give control over the purse to a foreign national or a foreign nation, you will lose control of your government. And people, that is exactly what would happen. You like, know why? 
You move forward to the time of Abraham Lincoln. Abraham Lincoln, the United States government was operating on the de jure status, legal status, up until the point of Abraham Lincoln's uh, presidency. And up until the point of Abraham Lincoln's presidency, there was no such thing as an executive order. The first executive order was issued by President Abraham Lincoln. An executive order is something that is issued underneath uh, cor corporate, corporate law. Because it's an, an executive of a corporation can issue an executive order. Now, President Lincoln, knowing that this looming threat over, over the lo losing control of the government via the banking system was going to happen, right? So these banksters already paid off six Southern senators in Congress, okay, to walk out of Congress. You need three branches of government, the executive branch, the judicial branch, and the legislative branch to have a de jure lawful govern, government in office. If any one of these branches is not legal and operating legal and lawful, then the government goes under de facto defect status and is not legal operating legal and lawfully, okay? These six southern senators that was paid off by the and the, and by the same powerful families that was behind of the civil war between the north and the south. All the shit you guys read in U.S. history is bullshit. What you guys read in 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 the history books, the civil war has nothing to do with slavery and black people. This had everything to do with the control over the government and who and finance the North and who and finance the South was the same damn people that had financed the war between the North and the South under the isthmus of being an issue on slave color issue. The same people who fund the women's lib movement. They don't care who in, they fund both sides. But if you don't see, if you get people, we have eyes, but we don't see. We get ears, but we don't hear what the Spirit is saying unto the churches. Yeah? And don't get me wrong. I'm not one activist. I'm not one activist. All I'm merely stating is what is right. And everything I share with you guys, you guys can go to a library and look them up. You can go online and look them up. Now, check this out now. President Abraham Lincoln, knowing that there's a possibility that these banksters will infiltrate Congress by putting their lobbyists in Congress in powerful positions to try and overstep Lincoln's rule, knowing, okay, that if they... At the end of every Congress, there is a thing called a quorum. At the end of every Congress, they set a quorum. That's when the Speaker of the House hits the gavel. And the quorum is a legal appointment of when they can reconvene Congress. If a quorum is not set up at the end of every Congress, then Congress cannot lawfully reopen again. That's why at the end of every congressional meeting, the president, the speaker of the house will hit the, or the uh, which is like the judge, the speaker of the house hits the gavel saying, we will set a quorum to reconvene Congress on this date. Okay, check this out now. Check this out. Before the speaker of the house, they could close oh, that yeah. session to reconvene Congress, to set a quorum. Six Southern senators during the time of Abraham Lincoln serving as president when walk out of Congress leaving Congress without a quorum. Do you guys know from that time till today, Congress has been operating under de facto status. They operate under the color of law, but not under legal and lawful jurisdiction. So, President Lincoln, knowing that this was one move from the, from the central banksters to infiltrate Congress, to counteract everything he was going to do because they wanted their laws to be pushing to set up a central bank here. And Abraham Lincoln was having none of that crap. Okay? Knowing what they did, President Lincoln issued the first executive order as commander-in-chief of the armed forces, not as president of the, of the lawful United States government. He became, I was like a martial law. He became the absolute law. And he ordered the U.S. military to go to those six southern states. We had those six senators. And at gunpoint, order those senators to come back to Congress and reconvene Congress to, so that they can set a quorum to reconvene Congress. Because he knew until they were reconvene Congress, the, the congressional branch, the, the branch of government, was de facto, and you know what? If you number one branch of government, the whole government is defect. What happened to President Lincoln before he could go and do, may do this thing? We all know what the history book said, what happened to President Lincoln. And President Lincoln was a very spiritual, intuitive man. He saw his death before they would execute him at that play. 
Remember, he was shot in the back of his head when he went to the play. Somebody shot, and that man was a good man, President Lincoln. They shot him in the back of his head, the banksters, because they never liked him, fulfill what he wanted to do, which was to reconvene the lawful and legal de jure Congress. But he was executed and shot behind the back of his head by the people that, that already had lobbyists. They were caused the walkout of Congress. And did you guys notice that from that time, from Abraham Lincoln's time to today, Congress has been operating under the color of law. Not under de fact, not under de jure lawful status. So under the color of law, the United States government is de facto, hence why it became incorporated into a corporation. Under a corporation, yes, under a corporation, who is the head? Who has supreme power? The commander and chief of the corporation. This is why no matter what Congress do, doesn't the president have the power to veto whatever Congress has? Because he has supreme power under a maritime wartime scenario. He has absolute power. He is supreme power. This is why Trump, he knows that he get the ace in the hole. But he, trying to, he, he seems to be trying to do it through a process. But if they're going to lock heads and, and, he, and like he said, he's going to lock up the government. All he got to do is issue, issue uh, emergency powers. Under emergency powers is like martial law. He, be, he takes over command, he becomes commander in chief. And I promise you this if he, if he declares emergency powers, the first thing he's going to do is he's going to send the military to the southern border. Because the U.S. will go under a wartime scenario, under a military uh, wartime occupation scenario. But they need to continue to perpetuate the illusion of lawful, organized. Everything has to look like it's, it's just going along as natural. But, but people are telling you, are telling you guys, already the government, uh, already the government pretty much own your children the corporeal form of your children the birth certificate gives the government to C cps and the government power to come into your homes at any time and yank your children from your homes and you have no damn say and they give you the illusion of due process okay and passing this law on the hawaii the hawaii hawaii legis legislature of you know can spank your kids are you guys freaking crazy now you can let them come and tell you how to raise your children you might as well just hand your children over to the state because they're already wards of the state. But we don't know people. We was under occupation. Hawaii is under a unique status. If you was born here, you was born under a wartime occupation. Okay? This is why everything's still up in the air. They say in the U.S. that this, uh, Hawaii, the state of Hawaii is U.S. is the is U.S. territory and they didn't seize all the assets of the United States. If they didn't seize the assets of the United States, then why do we even still get caught, caught cases about the ceded, ceded lands and the crown lands and all that under the kingdom? And what people don't know, I want to tell you guys this, there is one surviving, there is a surviving uh, uh, office of the kingdom of Hawaii. And it ain't the, it ain't the uh, real, real property tax office. The branch, there was one of the surviving branches of the kingdom is the Bureau of Conveyances. Because we're under a unique status of a wartime occupation status, yes, you have, you got to go follow your land, your, your, your real property tax with the real property tax office, which is under the U.S. system, the, their system. But you also simultaneously file copies at the Bureau of Conveyances. The Bureau of Conveyances under Carl Watanabe, that he was the last registrar of conveyances that I know of that runs the that I don't know if he's different it's different now, but when I when I first filed my papers about my, my status as one as a private citizen being under the kingdom, um Carl Watanabe was the registrar of conveyances at the Bureau of Conveyances. The the Bureau of Conveyances is one of the surviving branches of the Kingdom of Hawaii. And, and nobody knows that the U.S. been purchasing oil of uh, foreign oil using the name Kingdom of Hawaii. You guys knew that. You guys knew that the the the, the state of Hawaii that you guys operate under, and the Kingdom of and the, the federal government has been purchasing oil using the name Kingdom of Hawaii. Now I like know where the assets of the of our allies went, or the gold bullions. Because I'm gonna tell you guys this: get billions, maybe even trillions of dollars in gold. They belong to our Ali's. Where is the accounts of our Ali's? Yeah? During the time of the operation of Kiaupuni or Hawaii. 
they may have seized the public lands, but did they seize the private lands? Did the federal government seize the private lands that belonged to the Ali? Because under the kingdom, he had the public lands, there was the, the, the lands belonging to the people and the crown, but then the, but then the Ali's had private lands. Now the Robinsons, did, didn't the Robinsons acquire Nihau under an Alorio title? And if the federal government recognizes the Robinsons' claim on the Alorio title, which is given to them supposedly by Ali's, Ni'ihau, then what is the difference from any other Kanaka that has the Palapala Silanui or the Alorio title? Why recognize the, the, the Robinsons' claim to Ni'ihau on the Alorio title that supposedly was, given, was acquired from the Ali's? Why the federal government, you don't see, you don't see police patrolling Ni'ihau. And supposedly the Robinsons would acquire an E.I.O. under on on the, uh, Lodeo title, which was granted a long time ago by Ali's. Why the federal government recognize their, their claim to, to uh, uh, the Moku? Yet, you get Kanakas, Hawaiians constantly going to state level court, eh? because I tell you guys why. Wrong jurisdiction. We're going into the wrong courts. The state level courts was created to disillusion the people. You got to go into federal court. And on the federal court, your your Palapala Silanui, your land patents is recognized by the U.S. federal court. I know that because we had Ohanas over here. I don't like mentioning it, but they went into federal court and the federal judge said, Auntie, you have no you have no worry. Your your aina is safe. But they get the Hawaiians tied up in the wrong court system. You go to the state level courts, you're gonna lose every time. That's why we get plenty of Kanakas, land rich, money poor. And they tie you up in endless court cases so that they break you financially. So that you know more, I cannot go on anymore. Yeah? Because they get us tied up in the wrong system. It's the wrong venue. You have to request a change of venue. They're going to say, well, if you go to federal court, you got you to gotta make an appeal. You got to make a request for a change of venue and an, and an appeal. We are not a wrong jurisdiction. I would, even, I would even dare to say that maybe even federal courts might even be the wrong jurisdiction because Hawaii is operating under a wartime scenario. An occupation, what time scenario, which does come under the uh, the uh, the law of armed conflict. And my thing too is this: if if Hawaii, if we had, if our allies, okay, we had diplomatic, greatly diplomatic relationships with France, with with other foreign countries, even with supposedly with England, which actually fuck us over for real, with supposedly with England. Because letters were sent out to the Queen of England when they didn't try to overthrow the when they didn't try to annex the kingdom. Letters were sent out to the Queen of to, to England to come and assist us. But where where all of our our diplomatic uh uh the the, the nation that was supposed to stand by Kaupuni Hawaii, where where it was when this when these foreigners would come over here, violate international law and do what they did here. Yeah? Where it was. Where all the the uh, the the ones that had treaties with Hawaii, where it was? How come they never come? When they saw Hawaii was under neutral status, Hawaii was like Geneva. Why we never have one? Why Hawaii never have one national military? Was because Hawaii was a neutral state. We had we had the Kingdom Guard that would guard the Iolani Palace, but we had no we had no national military because Hawaii was considered like where the world's court is in Geneva. Hawaii Hawaii had a an interesting status. We were considered a neutral state where you cannot commit war. On a neutral state, you cannot because why? Any war done upon one country that is a neutral state will pull in all, all the other one, all the other ones that they have treaties with into their battle. So much disillusionment been going on, and the government knows it's only a matter of time before the people gonna awaken. This is why, like what this is what, like what I said, what Uncle Keanu said doing about educating the people. People, we there already. We just don't know. It's not about uh, who get Ali'i blood. It's not about who get this right title. Because all it's all kukai crap. All these different sovereignty groups. I, I tell you what. I tell you guys this one. I can prove you guys. Prove to you guys I get Ali'i blood. It goes right to the top. But that don't mean shit. We know, I don't get doing by myself. We need our people to come together. I want to share with you guys something else too. That not much people knew too. Did you guys know that Brother Israel Kamaka Vivo Ole? Our Hawaiian uh -huh. Superman brother is that he requested to rest in state as a subject of the Kingdom of Hawaii. He did not want to be recognized as a citizen of the United States or under the state of Hawaii. Did you guys also know too that that some people went in to the governor's office and told him we want to hold brother Izzy's funeral at the state rotunda, and you know what they told him? Oh, we no can. Only politicians can have their funeral at the state rotunda. 
And you know what the Kanaka said? All the Kanakas in Unite and they told, they told the governor, if you don't allow us for whole brother Izzy's funeral at the state capitol, we're going to march over 100,000 strong on the state capitol. And just like that, magically, brother Izzy was allowed to have his funeral on, in the state rotunda. But you know what they're not telling the people? That there was a document present at brother Izzy's funeral on a podium. Because the Makassans is believed in sovereignty. They believed in, they wanted to rest in state. Israel wanted to rest as a subject of the kingdom of Hawaii. And I'll tell you guys this. As long as the documentation that was on the podium at Brother Izzy's funeral was on the premises of the state capital, did you guys know that for the short period of time, the kingdom of Hawaii was restored? As long as the document, that's why the U.S. federal government, the Department of the Interior knew what the shit was going on with Israel's funeral. And they sent agents from the federal government at Izzy's funeral. There was agents all around over there. You like, know why? They had to make sure that at the end of his funeral, that documentation about his sovereign status had to be hand carried off the, the state capital premises. Because as long as he was occupying the state capital, the kingdom was restored. All that we need to do, Kanaka, is stand together. Not this sovereignty group, that sovereignty group. This We need to stand together. And we cannot do this alone. If the Kanakas go into the state capital and tell the governor, if you're not going to allow us to have Israel's funeral at the state Rotanda, if that knows enough to open the eyes of the people of how the state will have to, if every Hawaiian went stand up, they would have to listen to our people. But you know what? They're picking and choosing who they're going to listen. Then they create one then they create, like how you get the Office of Indian Affairs. Now you get the Office of Hawaiian Affairs operating as an interim uh, office operating on behalf of the Hawaiian people. They were a subsidiary of the state of Hawaii, which is a subsidiary of the federal government. Anybody be that believe in that shit is a fucking traitor against our ancestors. It's all kukai. They like position, who they like position to be the Hawaiian government. Because you like, know why? Because they still will be in control. Even when they think that you, that, you know, perfect example with the freaking oil pipeline in the mainland. They say that the Native American Indians get, get absolute control over the reservation. They create the laws of the reservation. But freaking just like that, the laws don't mean shit. They can run on fucking pipeline right through their property that's supposed to be sovereign territory belonging to the Native American people, Indian people. I mean, talk about lawlessness and, and uh, you know, like an F you in your face. You know what I mean? What you got to understand is their laws, the white man's laws, is made to be reinterpreted and bent whenever they want it to be bent and however they want it to be bent. You like know how? Because the definitions of legal terms change every time. And we learn this, that the snakes do this. Why do you always issue a revised version of the Black's Law book? Because the might mean this today, but when they do a revision of the Black's Law book, the means something totally different tomorrow. And they change the law according to their needs. But these powerful families that do this, they have armies of attorneys that dictate the changing of the laws, and they can manipulate it in whatever way you want. We wouldn't even have the resources to take them on legally in court. I'm telling you guys, we wouldn't have the resources. They would tie you out, they would financially break you before you're going to win them at their own game. That's why we cannot play the game. We have to stand in honor. You know who you are. You know you was born Kiki Okaina or Keopuni Hawaii. You know that. Stand upon the truth. But people, we got to come together. I'm not one, i not one, you guys got to know this, you guys. I'm not one, I'm not one activist. I'm not one person. I'm just one simple man, like all of you guys out there. But we got to come together. If we come together, I promise you, what are they going to do? Kill us all? No. What are they going to do? Commit international genocide on a large world scale against every Kanaka? People, one of the last census, census that they had out when said that there was less than 2,000 full-blooded Kanaka left in the whole world. We are an endangered species. 
They don't give two shits about us. Even when I was working with Hui Malama, the, na the Native Hawaiian healthcare system, God bless them, yeah, for all that they're doing. You know the funding that they was getting for run the Hui Malama office was coming off of one funding that was actually issued to the uh, office of... Uh, um, the Office of, uh, of Indian Affairs. That was a grant that was given to Native American Indians because of one sentence in that grant that mentioned the Native Hawaiians. That's why Hui Malama would get part of the grant. And now they're getting, now they're getting, uh, what you going call it? Um, they're sequestering all of these grants. They're cutting back on all these grants. And now they like shut down even... Hui Malama is an amazing program that's helping our Hawaiian people with health care. We're taking them to the appointments. You know, and all of a sudden, now they're going to stipulate and say, well, you're supposed to only educate them with how, about health. You're not supposed to drive them to the doctor's appointments. It's like, it's like more legal jargon, more red tape bullshit. And really, they don't like help the Kanaka. I'm telling you guys, they don't like. They don't like help the Kanaka. The sequestering of all of this funding... We we will get that funding, that million dollars, so many million, off of the Native um, Indian, uh, the Na Native American Indian grant because of one sentence that was written for a Native American Indian grant. That's why Hui Malama will get the funding because of one sentence mentioning Native Hawaiians. But now, even that little, even that little morsels of leftovers that they gave the Kanaka, yeah, for for fund our Native Hawaiian healthcare system that is sorely needed in Hawaii. They even went sequester that now. Now they're cutting back on all that. So and then and then they like shut down uh, Hui Malama, the van system and all that. It's like you guys really like help the people or are you actually continuing on legal form of genocide? They're continuing on legal form of genocide. And do, they do not want the people to, to stand up and to step into who they are. And you you are all more powerful than you know. No give up your power, my people. Do not give up your power. You cannot. What you don't know is you can't you cannot. You know? We gotta educate our people. Not in white man's law, because you're gonna lose. We got to educate our people in kingdom law. And then we stand upon the law of the Lamb. And even when they came, they made us believe that our, our, our culture, our religion, it was all no good. Everything was no good. When our Ali started to freaking dress like them, started to go to the, the jubilees, and their, you know what had happened? We would start to devalue who we was when we became to take on their lifestyle, their ways. And then we actually didn't believe that we was devil worshippers. Because you're like, no, why? If you control on people's belief, you not only control their body, you control their soul, you control their uhane. And they made us go and throw on all of our pohakos. That's where they was wrong. And that's why what we're doing, not only with Mauna Awakia, not only with Makanao, with, 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 with opening the temples, we're not opening one temple of devil worship. Are you guys freaking crazy? My tutu lady guys would slap my head. But get the talk going around. And I will tell you guys this too. Even get US, US uh, spies in the different sovereignty groups. Planting seeds to make sure that the sovereignty groups fail. They like, they're going to they're gonna, they're gonna, they're gonna encourage each group to be independent. Don't listen to the other group. You're the one in charge. You're the Ali. You No, bullshit. We need. We gotta come together. Why you think Kamehameha turned Kaui Keoli when lock up all the kingdom lands? What Kaui Keoli did for our Aina is he went lock everything up on the trust. That even he knew what the white man was gonna do, and that's why right before they did what they did, King Kamehameha turned Kaui Keoli when lock up all the kingdom land. He put them all. He lock them all up for my people. He said, "On true Ali." Lives not to serve himself. He is a servant of the people. That is what a true Ali is. And we got to stand upon the law of the land. And the law of this land is not U.S. constitutional law. And sad to say, not even the American constitutional law can help them when they come under the jurisdiction of the law of armed conflict. Because they've already done it. To U.S. patriots serving in World War II, they will give their life for the United States 
And they, they was tried under the, a law of armed conflict because why? Because they were sent to the Middle East under a diplomatic impression of diplomatic works and then they were set up by their own government that they wouldn't give their life for and then they come back as color, as decorated war veterans in World War II only for be sentenced secretly under the U.S. law of armed conflict as enemies of the state when they were set up for do this? How can this nation treat their own war veterans like that? They will give their life for the nation and then secretly try them in secret. And then lie to the public that the people died of a heart attack. But they would end up dying under a military tri hung tribunal where you have no rights. You just stand there. Same shit they did like with Saddam Hussein. And I will say, I tell you guys this, another even support, another supporter of the crazy man. But he kept the Middle East in check, bro. And immediately, immediately ever after they removed Saddam Hussein, they went destabilized the whole Middle East. But it was never about justice. It was never about peace. It was never about establishing a greater peace in the region. They freaking destabilized the whole region. Yes, Saddam Hussein was a killer. Yes, he had one torture chamber under his house where he lived. But you know what? It took one crazy motherfucker to keep all the other crazies in line. And he kept all the crazies in line. But when they removed him, or when they removed Gaddafi, they went destabilized the whole Middle East. But this was the plan. This was the. Uh, I tell you guys this: every war no happy for reason, no, no happy for no reason. Look, all you guys gotta do is follow the the money trail. Go look up who's the families that are the war profiteers, the ones who profit off of war. President Kennedy was killed, and you know why Kennedy was killed? Because he told the, these powerful families, "I'm gonna end the Vietnam War and bring our boys home." And you know what they said? No, you're not. You messing with our money now. We need this war to go on. And 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 right before you they didn't kill him, what he said, I'm gonna end this war, I'm gonna bring our boys home. Yeah? And what they did to him. Yeah. How powerful is these people that they can assassinate United States presidencies? Presidents. Yeah? Talk about one fractured government. Talk about have a law. Yeah? People know the truth. They know the truth. Get some corrupt families out there, bro. And I tell you what, all hidden things shall be brought into the open. And with my two eyes, I'm going to see the cabal fall. My father in heaven told me that. You're going to see the cabal fall. Because, because injustice cannot exist forever. There is a greater law, a greater hand here at work. And yeah, people against Donald Trump and all that. I'm not a supporter of the guy. He's a womanizer. He's, an, he's, an, he's everything you can call under the book. But I believe God, God gets something in works, bro. In the process, they're going to be undone by one of their own. <laughs> and the dark ones going to be undone by one of them. That's why I keep telling you guys. Indictments going to fly. People going to end up in jail. But by the hand of their own hand, they were set out to cause all this hakaka. Their own going to bring them down. And you watch. This could come to pass. You're going to see with you guys' eyeball. We're going to see them in our lifetime. We may, a funny thing will show me, we might even see a new form of government arise out of all this kukai. For real. But for us, we got to stand on the supreme law of the land. And the supreme law of our land is not the United States Constitution. That's the law of our tutus. We, that's what we got to stand on. But that's what they don't want us to go into. Then they create these interim, interim uh, agencies that is meant to be like a a um, a a middle a middle man between the Kanaka. Oha is one. <laughs> you guys, if you guys don't think Oha no work with the government, you 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 are thoroughly disillusioned for real. You are thoroughly disillusioned. Remember about the color of law. Remember the illusion of. Independency, the illusion of self-determination. Remember now, you guys are going to trust this government that told the Native American Indian tribe, you are sovereign within your reservation. But fucking just like that, they can lift that off and run an oil pipeline, okay? Through these people's supposedly sovereign territory where they had supreme rule over their land. Their laws no mean shit. And if you believe in the illusion, you dumb. No, for real. For real. Another, and, and I'm going to tell you guys this. I'm not inciting rebelling against the United States because it is, I, I think it's a mistake to rebel and to create a form of militia and to fight against them. You're crazy. 
for you crazy. But we stand upon the supreme law of this land. And the supreme law of Keopunio Hawaii is not U.S. Constitution. It's our, the law of our tutus. That was already set forth and is already the law of the land. Uncle Keanu Sai was correct. We need to educate our people. Because that's the one thing, that's the only enemy of our people is not being educated. Cause, and, and what we got to remember that even when we become educated, we got to remain ha, ha ha and remember the greater principles that supersede even kingdom law. What is that? The law of Aloha. That's the thing that brings us all together. When we get that established in our heart, we're not going to seek to make our sovereignty group above all. We're not going to seek to want to control everything because it's not about control. You cannot do them. One king is not one king unless he gets people behind him. And on people is not on people unless they get one king helping them. But all this is made possible when we live with aloha in our heart. So if you in your sovereignty group is of the heart of aloha, then you be the one to take the humble step. No wait for them. No wait for the others to take the humble step. You take the humble step. And if you take the humble step to reach out to these different groups in humility, being ha, -ha and in love, then you are a leader that even I would follow. You are a leader worthy to be followed. And I would follow you if you are humble and you would reach out. And not, and even like with this thing, with this kingdom of Atui thing that would happen in Honolulu, not go mock them. You know what I mean? Nobody do this kind of shit because, because they like it. You know what I mean? But there's a greater movement going on here where they like, you, you know when they sent out this, when during the creation of this, uh, that, that, that military troop, the one, what the heck they call it? The one they get those vehicles that can drive over the lava and the hot spots and all that, not the hot spots, but over the lava, the all-terrain vehicle, the squad they implement up here at Tuakuloa. You know why that was brought in? To deal with civil disobedience. They are counting on the people to revolt, but we cannot in violence. That's what they want. Do not do what they want us to do so that they can do what they get planned for do. They're trying to irritate the people, even with this thing of Mount Akea. They're trying to irritate the people saying, oh, you know, yeah, we, you know, we, we recognize the Native Hawaiian rights and all this, but when it boils, boils down to it, we're still going to build team DMT. No. You guys, we got to educate our Hawaiian people. God bless you guys. I love you guys. <sighs> Thank you for letting me do my rant and my rave, but you go look up the things I said about the thing with Abraham Lincoln and all this and about the Constitution, about the Congress. You guys going to trip. It's for real. They're operating under color of law. De facto status. From that time to today. God bless you guys. I love you guys. But we cannot allow the state of Hawaii to dictate how we raise our children. Because it's not a matter of time before before they're going to implement complete jurisdiction over your lives and then control your life. and take. They're already trying to do that. No give them more power. No put them on paper for give them power. God bless you guys. I love you guys. May the light and life of the Creator be with each and every one of you guys. And may the tutus bless you and the kupuna and the akua and the amakua. Aloha.